All right, people, about that time again. We've got some college football games coming up this weekend, and actually there are a couple before the weekend starts. So uh, let's just go ahead and talk through it now. Really good games. A lot of quality this week, I think. I'm really impressed. I've, I've got a couple games here that are not on super big networks as well, and I understand that. Some people may not get these channels, but I, I had to throw them in there, and I think most people get these channels, and if you don't have them, then there are ways to get them, if you know what I mean. But anyway, not talking about that. Of course, I mean going over to a neighbor's house. But anyway, it starts tonight, so I wanted to get the video out now, and yes, you may notice I'm trying to use dark mode on Google Docs. Uh, don't know if it makes a difference, but uh, we're going to rock with it for a minute. So, tonight, Thursday night, we've got a game at 7 p.m. on Fox Sports 1. Not a primary network, but most people have it, I think. You got Utah versus Washington State. Utah has one of my favorite nickel corners in the league, Phillips III, or Nation, Phillips III. He uh, was the one who, I believe, had a three-pick game earlier this year. And Washington State has Cam Ward, a developmental quarterback who may be available past the top 100. So between that, you've got some interesting stuff to watch when Washington State has the ball. So two points there, good start. And then Friday night, Friday evening, 5 p.m. ESPN2, we've got East Carolina versus BYU. Not big. I'm not going to exaggerate it. BYU does have a defensive end that I like, Batty, and their kicker, Olaroid, one of the better kickers in college football heading into the year. So there's some stuff to watch if you watch this game. It's not a great game. It's not an amazing game. Not a ton of reasons. Not super compelling. But hey, it's on TV. What else are you doing Friday night? Just something to keep in mind here. And that gets us to the big slate on Saturday. And we've got a packed packed schedule to watch on Saturday. So for those of you out there who have been watching college football with Seahawks stuff in mind, get ready to be flipping back and forth a lot. Starts at 9 a.m. like it pretty much always does. 9 a.m. Saturday. We got a game on Fox, Ohio State versus Penn State. I think that's just kind of default must-see right now because Ohio State, they're Ohio State. C.J. Stroud is C.J. Stroud. And they're playing in Penn State, a really good Penn State team that can challenge Ohio State at least a little bit. So we're going to get this game. We're going to watch it. We're definitely going to see how Ohio State fares against a really good opponent, see how Stroud fares in particular, and we'll learn something, even though Penn State doesn't have anybody that I know of that I'm interested in right now. So that's a great game. At 9 a.m. on ESPN, so same time, you've got TCU versus West Virginia. So TCU has another nickel corner that I really like, Hodges Tomlinson. He's somebody I've had my eye on since the season started as a nickel. And West Virginia, I don't want to completely forget about them. They've actually got two guys. One of them is JT Daniels, the quarterback. And look, he... Okay. It's, it's not... It doesn't look like it's really happening. He's having an okay year. Not really going to change anyone's mind on him. Not great. But they do have a center prospect that I like as maybe a later round guy, Frazier. So, tune in. Not a bad game. Definitely keep it on in the background. Prioritize the Ohio State game. But there's some stuff to watch over on ESPN as well. And then we get to 12.30. The early game should pretty much all be done. We've got a big one on CBS. You got Florida playing number one Georgia on CBS at 12.30. So Florida, they've got two really interesting guys, and I think these guys are becoming even more interesting now because the opportunity for the Seahawks to take a developmental guy to sit for a year or two is now here because of what Geno is doing. So Anthony Richardson becomes all the more appealing because of the Seahawks situation changing. And, of course, Gervon Dexter, one of my favorite defensive linemen in this draft. Every time I watch him, he's making plays in the backfield. They actually have another guy in Florida. I can't remember his name, but I think he weighs like 400 and something pounds. Dude is huge. He, I might have to add him to my list going forward because he's, he's uh, interesting just for the size. And, I mean, Georgia. Now, Georgia's just a great team in general. They're worth watching. But Jalen Carter is going to be near the top of a lot of Seahawks mock drafts. 
as they start to proliferate as the year goes on. And their center, Cedric Van Pran, nice little maybe mid-round guy, maybe mid to late rounds. I don't know exactly where he'll, will he'll end up, but decent center prospect. And there's probably some more stuff on that Georgia team that is worth keeping an eye on that I don't even have listed because they are so good. Now, at the same time, 12.30 p.m., Fox Sports 1, you can watch Oregon versus California. Cali's not good, so Oregon should roll. But Oregon, they've got a few players. I'm losing interest in Sewell because he's just a little too slow. But Flo is good, and their left guard Bass looks pretty good to me as well as a late-round guy. So not a great game or anything, but it's probably the second best thing on after Florida versus Georgia. Definitely keep it on Florida versus Georgia most of the time, but that's not a terrible game if you get Fox Sports 1 and you want to mix things up a little bit, maybe at, I don't know, commercial breaks, halftime. Um, we get to the early evening, late afternoon at 4 p.m. ESPN, maybe the game of the week, one of the biggest games of the year, Kentucky versus Tennessee. Now, Kentucky speaks for itself, and with Levis not playing last week, you know I want to see that. Justin Rogers, big fan of his too. Um, one of my favorite nose tackles in this draft. So Kentucky speaks for itself, but at this point, Tennessee also speaks for itself because of one guy, Hendon Hooker. He has become so compelling, so interesting, that I would almost say Hendon Hooker against any decent team is worth watching, but him against Will Levis, that's pretty much must-see TV for me. Give me the remote for this one. It's not going anywhere else. I want to see what these guys can do. Obviously, t Tennessee's got a big advantage in this game. Um, you would expect them to win because they're kind of a powerhouse at the moment. But if Will Levis can hang in there, make some plays, make some good throws, and do some good things, all the respect in the world to him for overcoming his not-great situation. Uh, 4 p.m. at NFL Network. So that's not a channel everybody gets, I know, but... I think a lot of people who watch me probably have NFL Network because they like the NFL. If you do, Coastal Carolina is playing Marshall at 4 p.m. And Coastal Carolina, kind of one of my low-key interesting teams, they've got Grayson McCall, uh, they've got a left guard I really like, Lampkin, and they've got a nickel corner I like named Strong. So not too many opportunities to watch Coastal Carolina over the course of a year. They're not on national TV a ton, but this is an opportunity to maybe catch them. And they've got three guys that I really like. McCall especially is an interesting late round sleeper guy who may end up being something in this league at some point. And then we get to 7.30. There's really only one game that caught my eye here. Stanford versus UCLA on ESPN, 7.30. Uh, Stanford still has Tanner McKee, who is, I'm not going to go crazy with it, but he's a little bit interesting. And UCLA has uh, DTR and Charbonnet. That alone is compelling enough to watch. I'm personally not super interested in either guy, but they're they they have they're not without their charm, not without their appeal. So that's it for this week. We've got a pretty packed schedule here. If you want to watch some of these games, I highly recommend it. So let me know what you guys think. What are you going to be watching? Do you disagree with any of this? Put it out. Put it out in the comments. I will see you guys later. Go Hawks! And that's how I'm watching college football this week.